into some interesting divisions. And he, on page 35, at the bottom, says that there are 14 conclusions in the second hypothesis. And one might ask, why are there so many and only so many? And he thinks it's important to relate the conclusions of the hypothesis to orders of being. And in uh, chapter 10, we're going to have some discussion about orders of being. He has a criticism, or uh, we'll see, he starts it off by differentiating himself from uh, Plotinus and certain uh, Platonists. Uh, we had done some reading in this, but maybe it would be good to just uh, go back and read through since there's been a little space in between since. So if we start on page 27, actually it looks like we're going to need uh, one other thing over here. Uh, can we have a reader to start on page 27? Volunteer? Okay. Well, I'd, I'd read for the price of a book. I'm <laughs> reading from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you going to abide by the usual rule? Good, good. Stop. Stop when you don't understand. <laughs> the greater and more difficult contest remains for me against those lovers of the speculation of things who look to the science of first causes as the end proposed in the hypothesis of the Platonic humanity. Mm -hmm. In this contest, we will accomplish a degree by numerous and more known arguments. And in the first place, we shall define what that is about which our discourse against them will be employed. For this, I think, will render the mystic doctrine of Plato concerning divine matters, natures, apparent in the highest degree. There are therefore nine hypotheses which are discussed by Parmenides in this dialogue as we have evinced in our commentary of the font. In the five <laughs> hypotheses proposed <laughs> <laughs> These are the five that, one before, <laughs> that uh, the one has a plus system and through this hypothesis that all beings, the millions of holes, and the termination of the progressions of things may be supposed to subsist. But if we're not talking, they would follow these and produce the one, not having a question. Why don't you pull that door closed behind you? Oh, in the lock itself. It's in the lock. It's subsistence. Subsistence? Yeah, you said that that puzzle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It bothered me because strictly speaking, yeah, the, the first, first one. one doesn't have a That's subsistence. Right. So I'm, I, I think I understand what he's saying, but I think I disagree with it. Uh -huh. as, it as it's stated. If I understand the subsistence means. This is that old question of uh, how do we understand the phrasing of the first hypothesis if the one is. Uh, 
and we used to say that although he says if the one is, he's not attributing any being to it, but he's using that as a phrase, a word to uh, complete the sentence, to make it a grammatical sentence. But and, uh, so I would I, I would have a question about whether the one of the first hypothesis could be said to have a subsistence. But if we distinguish uh, the fact that he starts off if one is, and then in two, three, four, and five, he's dealing with, Parmenides is dealing with uh, the consequences for the one and for the many, whether the one is. And in six, seven, eight, and nine, the consequences for the one and for the many, if the one is not. Yeah. And certainly, you would say there would be a difference between one and six, or one and the last four. Yeah. <coughs> if you said that you couldn't buy the fact that the one is, you would still have to say it's different than. It, it would be more like beyond okay. being rather than not up to it. Yeah. So we could maybe. Uh, anyway, I believe that he's calling the hypothesis one through five the five precedents. Yes, yeah, it sounds a little bit like Howard Cosell. Yes. Yeah. Before you go on, though, <laughs> I don't understand what it is that he's arguing against. Uh, this is, it's a, he's going to demonstrate something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we come to what he's arguing against on the next page. Uh, oh, it's not in the first paragraph? I mean, what would it be then? That's what I was wondering. He says, against lovers of speculation of beings who look to the science of first causes, as the end proposed in the hypothesis of platonic femininity. Uh, that names the is that going to be who it's going to be. Uh, and at the bottom of the page, starting with, for the ancient Platonists, uh, and those who participated, we'll come to that. That's where he lays out uh, the difference between his teacher and uh, Plotinus. We were on laying out the, the four hypotheses. How far had you gotten, Nancy? Uh, yeah, that's the four hypotheses. Okay, but the four hypotheses which follow these. Can we go on from there? And we'll, we'll get to the okay. subject but the, of the dispute. But the four hypotheses which follow these introduce the one, not having a subsistence, according to the exhortation of the dialectic method, show that by taking away the one, all beings and such things as have an apparent existence must be entirely subverted and propose to themselves the com computation of this hypothesis. What does that word mean, computation? Compute. I guess it's like refute, but what's the difference? <laughs> Argue again? David is the what I turn to for questions like that. It means to feud with. Yeah, feud with, right. <laughs> and some of the hypotheses evidently conclude everything according to reason, but others, if I may be allowed the expression, perfectly <coughs> evince things more impossible than impossibilities. Which circumstance some prior to us perceiving, as it appears to me, necessarily to happen in these hypotheses have considered it as deserving discussion in their treatises on this dialogue. Mm -hmm. So he's laid out that there are uh, nine hypotheses and he's made a distinction between the first five and the subsequent four and that other people have discussed it. Now we come to the question of who are some of these other people and what are their positions. With respect to the first of the hypotheses, therefore, 
almost all agree in asserting that Plato, through this, celebrates the superessential principle of whole as ineffable, unknown, and above all being. But all do not explain the hypothesis posterior to this after the same manner. For the ancient Platonists and those who participated the philosophy of Plotinus assert that an, intel an intellectual nature presents itself to the view in this hypothesis. Subsisting from the superessential principle of things and endeavor to harmonize to the one and all perfect power of intellect such conclusions as are the result of this hypothesis. Is that the second hypothesis? Yes. The hypothesis Follow after the, after the <laughs> principle. That's so now we're going to look at what the ancient Platonists and Plotinus say about the second hypothesis. But that leader of ours to truth about the gods and confabulator of Plato that I may use the language of Homer, mm -hmm. who transferred what was indefinite in the theory of the more ancient philosophers to bound and reduced the confusion of the different orders to an intellectual distinction in the writings which he communicated to his associates. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, this is Serenius, uh, that leader of ours. At another place in the book, he pins it down as, as it being Serenius, uh, and we'll we'll see it when. Uh, so, Plotinus asserts that an intellectual nature presents itself to the view in this hypothesis. Uh, So he relates the whole second hypothesis to the intellect. And we're going to see that uh, you could say that this is treating the whole second hypothesis as a simple, one simple thing. Whereas uh, a, a Serenius and Proclus believe that it's not simple that it divides up into different orders and that we must make these distinctions and uh, we'll see what they are. What divides up into different the orders? The second hypothesis. Okay, I'm going to say the intelligence or the second hypothesis. Yeah, it's not just a simple uh, intelligence being. Uh, intelligence being. Mm -hmm. It's uh, there are orders. He's going to make an argument now that we must mark different orders in the second hypothesis. And we do this in relation to these different conclusions. Mm -hmm. This our leader, in his treatise on the present subject, calls upon us to adopt a distinct division of the conclusions, to transfer this division to the divine orders, and to harmonize the first and most simple of the things exhibited to the first of beings. <clears throat> to adopt a distinct division of the conclusions, to transfer this to the divine orders, and to harmonize this to the first and most simple of things you could uh, So that's why I put these up, although this comes in uh, section 11 the mention of the divisions, the mention of calling for an adoption of the distinct division comes here. So this is not just going to be 14 within one, but they're going to be divided up in some way relevant to these divisions. Hmm. But to adapt those in the middle ranks to middle natures according to the order which they are allotted among beings. 
and such as are last and multiform to ultimate progression. So we're going to have a distinction of first, middle, and last. And we can collect together some things that he says about what's in the first, what's in the middle rank, and what's in the last. For the nature of being is not one, simple, and indivisible. But as insensible, the mighty heaven is one, yet it comprehends in itself a multitude of bodies. And the monad connectedly contains multiple, but in the multiple there is an order of progression. Oh. Hmm, I wonder why. <laughs> and the monad connectedly contains multitudes, but in the multitude there is an order of progression. And of sensible, some are first, some middle, and some last. And prior to these, the souls, from one soul a multitude of souls subsist. Mm -hmm. And of these, some are placed in an order nearer, but others more remote from their wholeness. And others again fill up the medium of the extremes. Mm -hmm. This is the first part of an analogy. As in sensibles, these sort of things happen now all in relation mm -hmm. to in like manner. In like manner, it is doubtless necessary that among perfectly true beings, such genera as are uniform and occult should be established in the one and first cause of whole but that others should proceed into all multitude and a whole number and that others and that others should contain the bond of these in a middle situation. Oh. And, uh, well, a hierarchy. Mm -hmm. So that the lowest is going to proceed into all multitude. The middle being a bond of the first and the last. And the first being uniform and a cult. And we'll see a cluster of terms relating, therefore, when he's talking about more uniform, it belongs in this verse. Perfectly uh, Least true. uniform, most multi multiform, and various belongs in the land. That's why I have the most of the division in the last one. So he wants to divide these orders up to orders of being into these three basic orders. And he's going to relate that in some way to the conclusions of the second hypothesis. And it's all going to then tie in together with uh, the theology of Plato and uh, as exhibited in various dialogues. Uh, so now we're down to... It is likewise by no means proper to harmonize the peculiarities of first natures with such as our second, nor of those that possess a subject order with such as are more unical. But it is requisite that among these some should have powers different from others and that there should be an order in this progression of true being and an unfolding of second from first natures. Okay. Now, if you go back to the top of the page, you'll see that those who follow Plotinus assert, they do two things. They assert and they attempt to endeavor to harmonize. They assert that an, in, into, an intellectual nature presents itself to view, and he says, no, it's more than just a, a nature. It's three orders of being present themselves to view. And they attempt to harmonize to the one and all perfect power of intellect. And he says, here, likewise, it's no means proper to harmonize the peculiarities of first natures with such as are second. So we can't, uh, we have to be careful in these distinctions 
uh, in attempting to do this harmonization. So he's setting himself up in contrast to Plotinus and to those, uh, those that follow Plotinus in thinking it proper to make these distinctions and improper not to, uh, improper to ignore them. Uh, are there some questions about this part? Because that was quite a dense part. It gets so he's going to be able to show us why we shouldn't lump all those three into one and call it an intelligence band. Yeah. To show us why that it's important to make those distinctions. Uh, and it must have something to do with the fact they cannot be all harmonized in a, in a particular way, but there's differences between the three. Yeah, levels. right. He's going, for instance, when we get over to page 30, he's going to uh, invoke the Philebus and the method of division in the Philebus, and he's going to again mention this triple division here. Uh, but between where we are and page 30, there's at least one page. <laughs> this is a very good book. It's got numerically ordered pages. So 29 comes before we get to that, but it's going to pick that up again. So we were at the bottom of page 28. Yes. In short. In short, being which subsists according to or is characterized by the one proceeds indeed from the unity prior to being. It generates the whole divine genus. It is the intelligible, intellectual, super mundane, and that which proceeds as far as to the mundane order. No, Try that one. Yeah. <laughs> Slowly. Mm. In short, mm. being which subsists according to or is characterized mm -hmm. by the one proceeds indeed from the unity prior to being. Which only is, is that the first one or is that above? Yeah, that's the first That's the bar. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> well, how can it be? That's nice. No, is that what are you pointing at there? Uh, <laughs> the only thing prior to beings is that I know of is this ineffable. Well, well so then, but there is there's another term. Yeah. Now wait a minute. It's the a unity. But isn't there a being? Yeah, a unity. Let's stay with this. this That's an interesting yeah. sentence. <laughs> yes, it is. How about the first thing here? Oh, you'll get oh, absolutely. Being which subsists according to or characterized by the one. Yeah. Hi, Carol. Are <laughs> talking so about a one. being, though, which is characterized by the one? Yeah, one being. Well, then that one proceeds yeah. in that being proceeds indeed from the unity. Yeah. Right. It proceeds from the unity prior to being. Yeah. No, it seems like it's coming from the, the, be, the, the being that's characterized by the one. I mean, the, it, it's an association with the being, uh, the being is associated with the one. And it's that one that I understand the being. Yeah. That's a good question. Someone who's ready to be that the beams are proceeding from it. Would that be something like Uranus, Kronos, and Zeus, that they each hold the, char the characteristics of the one prior? Is that what he's saying? Mm -hmm. Well, between the one and being is really the world. That's what he's saying. Yeah, I didn't get that. No, no, that's what it says. Yeah. Between, between, between. Let's start over at in short again. 
Yeah. That's, that's what Rod was saying last week. Mm -hmm. That's what I understand. Proceeds indeed from the unity prior to being. Yeah. I mean, that's the words. So there's, there's no problem. Well, let's see then there's the, you get, this is the being which subsists according to or is characterized by the one. That being proceeds. From being unity. proceeds. <laughs> No, that that which is characterized by that being which is characterized by the one proceeds from a unity. Yeah, we're wrong. Well, we said that was an ineffable one, but that's not what he's talking well, about. Well, then it's not the procession. If it's a procession from a being, that's not from the from, from a unity. The first unity is this first order. Uh, that would mean that this second order. Mm -hmm is the one being. Uh, if you have a quality of something, it presupposes that that quality must have existed prior. So there's the one that characterizes the one being. being. One being. One mm being. -hmm. It's the one of that one being that it proceeds from. Is that what you say? The one being proceeds from the one. That's what you're saying. That's not what you're saying. It doesn't make it. Yeah, some. Me? <laughs> By the way, uh -huh. it's one. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah. I would say that this okay. is also. <coughs> That's beyond. Okay. And then finally okay. would be beings. That's <coughs> uh -huh. And that's all in the second hypothesis? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then beings. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then all beings. Mm -hmm. So this unity, <coughs> I think, is, we'll see, goes with this first order. The one being was the second order, and the uh, beings was the third order. Uh, okay, the next part of that is says, but the whole divine genus, these are the intelligible, intellectual, super mundane, and that is perceived as far as to the mundane order. Mm -hmm. What does the but generate? What is it that refers to? Is that going to be beings then? <laughs> the being, being which subsists according to the one proceeds from the one proceeds from, from but, but generates the whole well, it doesn't proceed from, it proceeds from the from unity the, from that unity prior it doesn't proceed from the one but generates right, right not from the ineffable one but it, it, it's the one that he's talking about when he, yeah. mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. generates okay. so the being generates mm -hmm. I don't know. Is that a unity? Can we not say at this point that that sentence is an IOU? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. No, it's fair. It's an IOU. Yeah. yeah. There's going to be a whole <laughs> series of IOUs. And by, by that, what do we mean? We mean that you have to hold your breath, understand it as best you can, and he has to make that clear further down the line. And if he doesn't, we collect on those IOUs, and to the degree that we have a stack of them, at the end of our reading, he's a poor author. To the degree that he has redeemed them all with later explanations, to that degree we can say it's cogent. Mm -hmm. But you can work all you want on that sentence. You're not going to make it clear. If all you do is stay in that sentence, because that's making an assertion, isn't it? He's making an assertion. Mm -hmm. well, you got to know what you're Yeah, you got to put, you got to say, where is this <coughs> unity in this hierarchy? Yeah. yeah, and you see he's got a further, that the being, that one being does something. Yeah, yeah. It generates the intelligible, the intellectual, the super mundane, hey, that goes all the way down into the mundane order. There's nothing that makes that clear. It's an IOU then. Right. So note it, 
Right. That guy better make that one clear. Yeah. Or we get our money back from Xerox Corporation. <laughs> 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 right. We applied a grant for unclear Xerox. <laughs> Okay, uh, what are our preceptor? What are preceptor likewise asserts that each of the conclusions is indicative of a <coughs> peculiarity. Each of the conclusions, the second hypothesis. And though all the conclusions harmonize to all the progressions of the one being, or of being characterized by the one, yet I am of opinion it is by no means wonderful that some conclusi conclusions should more accord with some hypotheses than with others. Sure, glad to hear that. <laughs> That's another I owe you. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, shouldn't be. Hmm. Some <coughs> conclusions can be reconciled more easily than others. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tough one. Yeah, give a bunch for instance. For yeah. such things as express the peculiarity of certain orders do not necessarily belong to all the gods. Mm -hmm. But such as belong to all are doubtless by a much greater reason present with each. But such as belong to all are doubtless by a much greater reason present with each. What kind of reason is that? He has a theory of, cl of types or classes. Mm -hmm. The property of a class is distributed to all the members. Two, uh, such things as express peculiarity of certain orders do not necessarily belong to all the gods. That's classes. We've used the word but there are some set of orders who classes. do belong to all. Some don't, some do. The ones that belong to all uh, are present with each. All the members in uh, have well, I was asking about the word reason. Is with there a reason why, reason? or is it reason that we reason with in our mind? There's much greater a reason why. A reason why? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The more the qualities, the more the qualities are present in each of the members of a class, the greater the reason you can assert that that quality or that characteristic belongs to the class itself. Right. If therefore we ascribe to Plato an adventitious division of the divine orders and do not clearly evince that in other dialogues he celebrates the progression of the gods from on high to the extremity of things, sometimes in fables representing the soul and a What? <laughs> sometimes in fables respecting the soul, and at other times in other theological modes, we shall absurdly attribute to him such a division of being, and together with this of the progression of the one. This is all against the idea of adventitious division. This is not an adventitious division. It's not just a uh, division that he happened on, but there's some reason to it. Yeah, we don't often use the word adventitious. No, Howard Costello uses it. But if I can? Yes, it's somewhere. Don't we use fluke? Or is it arbitrary? Yeah, fluke. Yeah. fluke. 
Yeah. 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 As will be manifest in the course of this work, has celebrated all the kingdoms of the gods. In a certain respect, it is not impossible that in the most mystic of all his works, he should deliver through the first hypothesis the exempt transcendency of the one with respect to all the genera of beings, to being itself, to the psychical essence to form and to matter, but that he should make no mention of the divine progression and the orderly separation. Uh, you understand that? It's pretty dense. Yeah. I believe that Plotinus would agree to the first part of that, <laughs> that in the first one through five, we can see it going down through uh, the one which transcends being. Where, where are those? Uh, being itself. Uh, what's the next one? Psychical, Psychical essence. Psychical essence. I'm not put a psi for that. Mm -hmm. uh, form, matter. And then what? Form. 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 Mm -hmm. And matter. And I think perhaps Plotinus would agree to this. And I uh, said it is not impossible that if he can do this, that he should also make these other distinctions within the hypothesis. Where in being itself, in two, yeah, in two, dealing with being itself, now he wants to have a threefold division of first, middle, and last order of being. So he's saying, well, if Plato's going to do this other thing, he's gonna, he should have done this number two, right? Or, yeah. Or, or it's not impossible. Right. This, is not a weak, impossible this is a weak assertion. So he should have done one in the Phaedrus or the Phaedo. Or, yeah, it's not impossible that he should make this distinction, given that you agree with he's done this. Well, it, it, uh, that would be that would be the. Uh, the reason yet for the Neoplatonist is to complete the work inherent in the, in the, the original work. You know, to to uh, expand it. Uh, yeah. So all you have to do is justify and say this is a this this expansion we're doing here is consistent. Mm. Now he wants But they would assert that it's inherent in it. It's inherent in it. Yeah, inherent in it, but, but and at oh, this point no. Oh yeah, well, what, what undiscovered would you be or unstated yeah. or whatever. Yeah, our they are present. So they just they're, 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 un un they're, un they're unpacking it. Unpacking. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Our presidentious leader has discovered this. <laughs> yeah, and he is showing it forth. Yeah, they're just unpacking it. Okay. Now, for the first time in Athens, we bring you the presidentious demonstration of the <laughs> division of the divine orders. <laughs> Yeah. I read it's a weak statement, but it's actually a strong question. You know, that is it not impossible? Rather than it is not impossible. Mm -hmm. Is it not right. impossible? Is it not impossible? Right. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. Because mm -hmm. the way I had it, it sounded <laughs> like it is not impossible then. <laughs> yeah, that's what she read. It, but that, that, uh, I, I, I knew you were carrying that away with you, so I wanted to give you a Oh, thank you, yeah. Let's see that again, man. It is not impossible, that. Is it not impossible? But we should find it. Yeah. Right. We yeah. should find it in the what, in the dialogue, the higher dialogue. That he should make all of these distinctions and not make these mm -hmm. would be impossible. Mm -hmm. Right. But he's done it in other dialogues. Right. Right. <coughs> right.
Yeah, when it's the most mystic of all his work, he does Mm-hmm. Okay, for if it is proper? For if it is proper to contemplate last things only, why do we touch on the first principle before other things? Or if we think fit to unfold the multitude of the proper hypothesis, why do we pass by the genus of the gods and the division of which it contains? Or if we unfold the nature subsisting between the first and last of things, why do we leave unknown the whole order of those divine beings which subsist between the one and natures that are in any respect deified? to do everything, how come you left out the most important hunk? <laughs> yeah. What can persist between the one? And? And nature said her. Then the last night. Oh, okay. All the mother nature's in there. <laughs> All other guys? Oh, well, mother nature's in there. All the mother yeah. nature. All the mother nature. All the mother nature. <laughs> <laughs> For all these particulars of them, that the whole discourse is effective with respect to the science of things divine. Magic as it might appear. Mm -hmm. It would be defective if it didn't have these distinctions. And now he's going to invoke uh, the Philebus, which, as you remember from when we read the Philebus, has a lot to do, particularly around. I leave us uh, 16C to about 18 and 19 and on uh, has to do with uh, method of division. So now he's going to make reference to that and then uh, make a uh, more discussion of this twofold division. So, let's go further. Mm. Still farther, farther, Socrates in the syllabus calls upon those that love the contemplation of being to use the dividing method and always to explore the monads of total orders and the duads, triads, or any other numbers proceeding from these. If this then is rightly determined, it is doubtless necessary that the Parmenides, which employs the whole dialectic method and discourses about being, which is characterized by the one, should neither speculate multitude about the one, nor remain in the one monad of being, nor, in short, introduce to the one, which is above all beings, the whole multitude of first beings immediately but should unfold as in the first order, such beings have an occult subsistence and are allied to the one. The first yeah. order Wait a minute. is going to... <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, let's, you got me hanging. Keep reading. Keep reading? Go ahead. But as in the middle... breath. But as in the middle rank... But as in the middle rank, those genera of the gods which subsist according to progression and which are more divided than the extremely united, but are allotted a union more perfect than such as have proceeded to the utmost, mm -hmm. and should unfold as in the last rank, such as subsist according to the last division of powers, and together with these, such as have a deified essence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so to put them in these three can in the second rank, they they have to have a deified essence, whatever that means. Whatever that means. <laughs> to be in the first, second, or third rank, you must have a deified essence. And and to and what determines the first, second, or third is wholeness. 
The first rank is the most uniform. The last rank is the least uniform, most multiform. And in the middle is less uniform than the first, but more uniform than the last. <laughs> and the first has an occult subsistence. And it's more allied to the one. Yeah. This last one is going to be more allied to, what did you say? Deified essence. Uh -huh. uh, they just have the deified essence in the last. Yeah, he's going to, <coughs> as we go on, he's going to add more about the deified essence. But that seems to be common in all three, right? Yeah. So these are the last of the ones having the deified essence. Right. What's the utmost? Furthest. Furthest descent. Furthest. What is ha a cult existence? Hmm? Having a cult existence? I believe a cult means uh, can't be seen. David? Um, oh, hidden. A cult. Hidden. 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 No, hidden. It's not cuprous. It's sometimes hidden or secret. Uh, translated. Hidden. Hidden. Uh, and remember, we're going to be able, after we discuss the conclusions, to see which conclusions do you relate to this order that has a cult subsistence. Uh, hidden, not readily, not readily visible. Uh, and most uniform and allied to the one. Later he's going to say that this last is allied to something else. We'll see that. He said it's allied to divine. Well, there's and more. Yeah. Uh, and the middle is, is a bond between the first and the last. Do you see them all linked up together? Like I do. All linked up together? Yeah, like the occult is subsisting, and then the bond is connecting the, the other two together. Like a chain effect? I, yeah, um, it's connecting them, and also because it's not right to go immediately from this first B to the multitude. But so right now you have them laid out separate. But they are linked. This is meant to be a bond. That's, uh, I, uh, this means distinct, not necessarily separate. This line indicates a distinction. Just visually. Yeah. You, you don't have a model there then, you're just taking the parts and looking at them. The, uh, uh, he wants to distinguish three orders. And uh, in that way I have a model. Uh, I don't have a model in the sense that I don't have the relation between them because we haven't come to that yet. I think that uh, they must be related together so that the whole hypothesis can be talked about as a whole hypothesis. But he wants to make a distinction uh, in these orders. And you got to tell us why, right? Because Plotinus doesn't do that. Right. Yeah, he thinks he can point out the distinction in the conclusion. And, uh, huh? and why it's important. And why it's important. And why it's important. Yeah. So we're still getting IOU stuff here. <laughs> uh, let's see where. For the dividing method does not admit that we should introduce the whole multitude at once to the one as Socrates teaches us in Philebus. That's 17b in the Philebus. Mm. Uh, well, yeah, the, three, the three things that 
shouldn't be done. Or uh -huh. that you should meet. But there are three things that you shouldn't meet. That actually shouldn't be done, and he suggests that it, it should be an unfolding of three orders of three orders. Uh -huh. uh, should deliver all the orders of being. Should, or not should neither speculate multitude about the one. Uh -huh. Speculate, I guess. Nor remain in the one monad of being, which I don't understand now, nor in short introduced to the one which is above all beings, the whole multitude of first beings immediately. Uh, Those are three things apparently you shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. I believe above this uh, second hypothesis is the one in the model that Pierre put up. Then um, hmm? Above, what? Above the unity Above is the, the one. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, not to speculate multitude of the one. That's not first, right? No, he's not talking about that. Doesn't ask what you said? No, he's talking about that, the, that being which is characterized by the one. It's one being. Yeah, okay, one being should neither speculate multitude about the one. Mm -hmm. So I take it that you shouldn't speculate multitude about that unity, nor remain in it in the one monad of being. I believe this unity is the one monad of being, and we should not just remain there, <coughs> but should not introduce the whole multitude directly without going through some middle rank. There's a question in my mind about this unity. You know, it looks to me like it's a window between the one and the being, and it's not being, and it's not the one. So I'm having difficulty with seeing something, putting it somewhere. I guess I had this discussion before. I guess I still have the question. See, it's, in a way, it's an IOU. We can, mm -hmm. if, you, if you don't mind, we, we can all contribute to the work would you accept this idea that uh, if you talk about a car, that's a class that admits of members? Because there's something common that runs through them all, and you signify that with this term, which we all know. Agree? Mm -hmm. Agree. In the realm of being, He's got, being isn't dead, there, it has a, it, it's alive, it's, there's a vitality to it, not animal life, but it has a vitality to it. That's going to be represented by this. Now, being isn't stupid. I mean, there's, a, there's an intelligible quality to it. By the way, that's the intelligible quality to it. But the greater part, we can say, is what we call a being. By the way, this, uh, the intelligible. Oh, you have the intelligible? Yeah, the intelligible. Mm -hmm. Right? You know something curious about it? It's not dead. It's got being <laughs> life. Life. Right? But being intelligible, it's mostly intelligent. Intelligent. <laughs> but <laughs> it is. It is, therefore. It's got being. It's got a hunk of being. And the life. Right? And would you agree with you know, the next <laughs> step? 
Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Now we got... Right, we can do the last one just to be consistent. Um, right. Now you can talk about vitality, but that's not something without any... Right. <laughs> right. Go ahead. Therefore, it's got an order of... Intelligence. Right? And it's got some things. And it has some match things. things. Mm -hmm. By the way, would you not agree they all fit into a class? You're mixing your colors up there. Yeah, oh, did I really? Yes, you yeah, need more pink in the ladder. The blue yeah. goes in the middle. Yeah. All right, all right, you're right, God. All right, God. Good to have someone who keeps me on it here. Good, good, thank you. But they all fall in a category of being. Right. Therefore, doesn't that presuppose there must be a general category of what? True being. Right? Yeah. yeah. By the way, you do mean one being, don't you? Mm-hmm. One being. Yeah. So, wouldn't you agree there can be... That, see, that, that's not a one being in the sense of a one. It's bounded. Right? By bounded by that, we mean it has a natural... Uh, it's a natural thing, it's a natural entity, it has a boundary. We specify by it something. Okay. Therefore it's bound, right. in that sense, intellectually it's bound. Though its particular content can in that respect be infinite in that sense. It's finite in the fact that it's one. Well, it's a category. <coughs> so wait a wouldn't you agree then, we, we shouldn't really call it one, we can call it, it has a unity to it. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Oneness. Which we can call a oneness. Okay. All right. But wait a minute. You can also have a uh, unity of something that doesn't have being. Oh, I. Feel right. Like Let's have something that is just that just has the potential. But you can't have being without a oneness. Right. Would you agree there can be things that are potential that don't have a being? Yeah. Well, then, and that can be, you can talk about all of it, can you not? In that respect, it has a unity by the same reasoning. Mm -hmm. Bounded, it's a concept. You're saying that a nothing can have a potential? No, not a nothing, a potential. Not a nothing. A what? But it doesn't have a to what? have any subsistence yet. Because well, this means it, be? it has actuality. Uh, then it wouldn't be. <laughs> it would be the twinkle in the, in, the, in the eye of God before he created <laughs> Right, okay. Can I okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree I have two members in the class? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Is there something common to the, to the class? Yeah, both unity. unity. Well, Carol's question has been satisfactory. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Let me go back. Have a question too? <laughs> Same one. It's a good question. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I didn't intentionally dodge it. I thought I did answer it. Okay. It was well, a rhetorical ahead, question. Jerry. She asked whether or not there could be well, a unity to nothing. <coughs> was not the point? Well, as I remember. That was the question. It wasn't rhetorically. I, oh, I, 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 I didn't understand how the potential could be uh, in nothing. I, I, didn't, or, I didn't suggest it was in nothing. But that if it, say, the difference between this, these two, we might say, is that this is actual. Yes, okay, then so actually it is not. That's right. Okay. Therefore it isn't that it's nothing. Okay. Now, it has a guy being. Watch, go one more step now. All right. Now we have unity, don't we? Now, this unity, this unity has a particular quality, doesn't it? It does something. Now, what he does, maybe I don't want to jump too far ahead, but what he's saying is, Remember, the idea of the one is synonymous with good. the good. Therefore, unity is a shadow of the one, to speak metaphorically. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it has a unity and goodness to it. Because anything in his system that is unified to the degree that it is unified, shares in some kind of goodness. Mm -hmm. Therefore, this unity is a hyphenated unity goodness. 
He said, hey, you know what? We're talking about orders of being, aren't we? We have one here. We have one here. We then see what this is. It's not being, though. No. But now are we making distinctions? Mm -hmm. He says, therefore, you can't just go from one to being as a many because you can find other distinctions between them. Mm -hmm. And you have to make room for it. How do you got to make room for it? He said, okay, look here, it's obvious. And where is it in Plato, he's saying? Hey, get the book out. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. So he's working on the assumption that Plato is masterfully intelligible. Plato is masterfully intelligible. you got to point find it, it's there. No one ever saw it before, it doesn't make any difference. Look for it, you'll find it. Because it has it's inherent. It's a, yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the belief of the Platonists. The Platonists says, hey, look, he grasped the intelligible oneness of the entire universe, the intelligible oneness of the entire universe, the very nature of the intellectual universe. Therefore, hey, you know what, you got a question? Try it. Bounce it off that and see what you get from it. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, this is why, all right, this now has a function. Since it does something, it not only unifies, but the degree to which it unifies, it has also has a goodness. Therefore, it is the basis of a word which I never used, by the way, until I read Propolis, Providence. Right, which is finally page chapter 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, watch this now. Okay, you have some fun. What's in each one of these things in the blue? Uh, intelligence. Intelligence. The word providence is pro noose. Mm -hmm. What comes before noose. No. Therefore, so this is before noose. Oh. Therefore, inherent in nature, inherent, inherent in the structure of reality is a goodness. Yeah. And good God. And that goodness must necessarily descend in creation in all of the realms of, of metaphysical reality all the way down to the mind having a cup of coffee. And they're not just created and then let go. No. no. But created and uh, looked after right. intelligently. So, right. so if there's any way of proceeding psychically up through this, all right, these are also different classes of, of experience. Mm -hmm. So then this would be providence is prophetic. Because then you wouldn't you would have an insight into the nature of the goodness of the nature of the universe. Mm -hmm. Before, before it reached mm -hmm. being. Yeah, right, right, right. So, so providence is pro-notice. What comes before it is? Providential and quality. Because quality and notice. So you would see the potential. But yeah, see so now this. This higher, now this quality right here, you see. You can stay on this true being. This is a category in itself, remember. Mm -hmm. It's not just a formal uh, class in which a, a group of things which exist are placed, mm -hmm. like the total number of things on this table. They don't have any particular relevance to them, to, to being members in that class. There's no intimate connection between it. On the contrary, the connection between these is certainly worth exploring because this true being is in its very nature intelligible. And he's got a whole beautiful, beautiful story. So, that I, I have one question on the unity that the potential. Yeah. Unity of um, is that is that different than the unity that is um, the one that we put that little bracket over? I, I thought that it Well I'm sure if I'd ask. Well I have to say yes Well the <laughs> way it was being read before it was like the unity of the true being was that unity that came prior. That's right. This unity comes prior logically prior and therefore metaphysically prior. This unity comes prior to being. Okay, there is, right. there is the one being, and it's, the, it's that one being, it's the one of that one being I took to be the unity. Oh, I can see why you see that. 
Okay, so I didn't understand how this potential unity came in. Unless it's If equality is shared, if equality is shared by members of a class, then that shared quality represents a prior class. Then it's not primitive, right? As they talk about it, just one way of talking about it. Right? Would you agree that if you have some things which you line up, whatever they are, if they share some quality, they belong in a class. They become members in a class. Yeah. I would Do we have some similarity between these two? And are the are these as members different? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I think we haven't seen in the Therefore, therefore these two stand to these two, do they not? Yeah, I, I can see that. I and know. then there's a quality that's common that runs through them? Yeah. Therefore, I can then separate that quality and consider that as the class of which they are members. Therefore, unity is different than one three. Yeah. Um, I want to relate something. For me to have this meaningful, I, mean, I have to relate it to my own life experience. And I'm going to convey what I think about it, and then you can shoot it down if you like, or, or say it's analogous and has some basis in fact. When I'm in a deep sleep, various things go through my mind called dreams. They're fragmented. They're multitudes of ideas. The alarm clock goes off or the telephone rings and I wake up and for a while I'm still fragmented, coming up to another level. Mm -hmm. I'm done. starting to get all my senses together to get a unity of thought. Mm -hmm. Once I reach that unity I become a one and the light shines and there is this divine opening that puts that power to me, whether it's through the sunlight or whatever, that gives me a sense of being. Mm -hmm. This is how I relate to oh, it. Oh, tell me, that sense of being that you described? <clears throat> When I'm, my thoughts are all together and I can perform an action, that's the feeling. Or I can function okay, as Thoughts all unit. together, right? Yeah. Right. Once those thoughts are gelled together mm -hmm. so that they're no longer fragmented in this mm -hmm. place, in the past or in the future or whatever, and they can, I can perform as a unit, but then they become unit. as a unit. Yeah. Then I, I have a sense of a functioning being. Now you can function with that unit. Is that what you're saying? That, that unit becomes functioning. That's where the being, that's where I'm existing with. Okay. The images that you used a moment ago, you lost, and it's probably because of my sketching. But, uh, can you go back to the images you were using on that? Just for people to say the From the deep sleep mm -hmm. with the waking up. Mm -hmm. When I wake up, I'm not sure where I'm at, mm -hmm. who I am, whether it's day or night. Where am I going? Where did I come from? What's today? Mm -hmm and I'm trying to get my act together. Mm -hmm. And once the pieces start to fall in place, mm -hmm. I'm able to think, oh, I can take one leg and put it out of the bed. <laughs> Wait, I have to shave. Mm -hmm. I have to get the coffee going. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to formulate ideas. Mm -hmm. It's all coming together again. Mm -hmm. And once I begin to move, I move as a unit as a being. Mm -hmm. 
<coughs> okay, what you've done is, is gotten together a functioning whole. Now the word being so far has what they're doing with this word, you don't know yet. So I'm just not keep that, that as a foreign word for a moment. I'm not right? saying this is a, a this is what they're talking about. I'm saying this is yeah. how I relate yeah. to it okay. as an analogy. That is to the way I see it. Yeah. Just go one more step on. Right? Okay. You mentioned before Maslow, did you not? Yeah. All right. Can you use this as an analogy with Maslow? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's been a connection that are coming together. The multitude. There's a way in which we can be said to be a slave. Right. But then we go through a bunch of puzzling concerns. Go ahead, keep going. And then we, those concerns become bonded in a way that they start to have some type of intelligence. And what does that do to the person? It makes them want. And what, how is that experienced? It's what we call self-actualized personality. That's where being comes in. That's what I mean. Right, that's where, right, right. You're using this as an analogy, right? <laughs> right. Right. So I wanted to push it to get you to say it. So right. Like that, right. So when you take this analogically, waking up is waking up to a new way of being, to a new new kind of existence is the self-actualized personality. Well, that's, that's being. In that self-actualization is that intelligence that you're talking about. Yeah. It's finally coming into being. Yeah coming into its own. Yeah. Yeah. And it functions this way, but on a higher level with Maslow's studies. Mm -hmm. right. And you know what we've done? We've made a mistake. It's about 12.20. We've worked overtime. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we had a party. Oh, no. That's right. Later. I mean, <laughs> special I mean, working overtime is not a good habit. Well, we never got this it. This isn't working. That's over. So, hold it. Uh, I'd just like to con conclude that for those of you that want to do some reading for next week, uh, I I uh, started out by saying that he's going to look at the conclusions of the second hypothesis and this notion of the different orders of being and. Pierre mentioned about prominence. The conclusions he's going to discuss in the rest of uh, this 10, and then he's going to discuss them further in 11. Uh, and when you get over to 13, 14, and 15, we have three, three that go together as a unit. That's on page 40. 12 is a review of the nine hypothesis, and 13, 14, and 15 are in relation to providence and to the laws. One of the lesser read dialogues of Plato. Uh, he says that there are three things on page 40, therefore, are asserted by Plato in these writings that there are gods that their providence extends to all things and that they administer all things according to justice and suffer no perversion from worse natures. So he's going to discuss those in 13, 14, and 15. And this uh, distinction of conclusions and orders is going to carry through a lot of the rest of the book. That's why we got a lot of IOUs tonight. <laughs> and uh, uh, therefore, I believe we have concluded. Good. Yeah. Have a coffee. Oh, have a coffee. Wait, 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 wait. Hold it. Chang, what is Chinese restaurant? Oh, oh we're going to have a banquet oh. next Friday night. Yeah. Oh, our banquet next Friday night. Here's a little map and instructions on how to get there. There's a sign-up sheet in the kitchen. I brought a couple of uh, of their menus along. Oh, are we paying next Friday or tonight? Well, thank you. What I? Is that the same sign-up sheet? Hmm? Is that the same sign-up sheet?
Mm -hmm. Same one that if you signed up last week, or if you talked to me, your name is probably on it. And I'd like for you to take a look at the family dinners on the back side of the menus and um, make a check by the one that you'd like. I'm, I'm suggesting the, the 995 one. So, yeah. And, uh,